Python on hardware time. Okay. It is CircuitPython. That's right. It's Python on hardware. We have a cornucopia of things. Oh, look. It's Blinka with gourds. That's right. So we're still in CircuitPython 6 land. We released it. 6.1 is out. out And we're just doing a lot of bug fixes and tweaks. ESP32S2 is still happening. But 6 overall is really stable. Um, other than the ESP32 S2, which is this new processor. But other than that, we, we're having a lot of people are trying it out. Um, it's now the stable release, so please use it for your projects. If you find bugs, please open up an issue and just give us reproducible code and as much info as possible. Uh, we've been squishing bugs every day. And our Python on hardware roundup, as Lydia said, we are in 6.1 beta. You can check out the latest things that are in the beta, or you can just stick around and hang out with the stable 6.0. We closed 2,000 open issues. Hooray. No, pull requests. Sorry, pull requests. Which is amazing. It's actually code chunks That's right. being submitted. And we have like th- over 30 open, which is a lot. And it's good. It's, we're getting people contributing um, fixes, uh, documentation yeah. updates. Um, you know, bug bug fixes or feature fixes, um, really great stuff uh, coming in from the community. I think ESP32 especially has started to accelerate that a little bit. Yeah, the ESP32 S2, the folks that are going to use it, they're going to not want to reinvent the wheel and circuit Python out of the box is a lot. Um, MagTech projects, you can check out some of the things that we're doing. Uh, this is really neat. This is a conference badge. Yeah. You can get this on GitHub right now. It may, you know, what's nice is it doesn't have to have battery. You can just Once you program, program it, it's over, and then you just keep it on your, your, your badge all day. This is a project. Todd Bot's been doing a lot of great CircuitPython projects. This is a um, what day is it uh, yeah. display. That's very. I like the different font action going on here. I like yeah. how s- Saturday is kind of like fun, and Sunday is kind of like heavy. And, yep, we uh, have our quote displayer. Um, yep. Then we have the MagTag version of the weather station monitor. There's a Circuit Pi UI on the new mag tag. Like buttons and we stuff. We have another quarantine clock. It's Monday noonish. Yeah. Um, we have Scott's deep dive with from Cat Cam last week, and then of course we have other things. Um, one of the things that came out that was kind of interesting is the ESP32 C3 RIS5 microcontroller. Yeah, was moving leaked. from tensile. Well, it's not really. I mean, kind of leaked, but also kind of. Yeah, we all kind of knew about it. Um, well, they've had a RISC-V processor inside the ESP32 S2 and, and family for a little bit as a coprocessor. Um, but moving from TenSilica to RISC-V makes a lot of sense. It doesn't really matter for the ESP32 what the core processor is because it's kind of like a Wi-Fi peripheral device with the core just kind of there to, to keep things going. Um, so moving to RISC-V could, could make a really um, a, a big impact in uh, pricing just because you don't have to license it. And also, um, you know, if you want to do machine learning built in, there's like machine learning add-ons for RISC-V that I've seen. So maybe yeah. that's going to be a little easier to integrate. If you want to have a Zoom Microsoft Team mute button using CircuitPython, you can use this, specifically an Adafruit Cutie Pie using CircuitPython. Um, we have a couple other examples of Feather S2 projects a DIY open source high fidelity preamp using CircuitPython. Here is a Nano ESP32 S2. You can install CircuitPython on a Raspberry Pi. Oh, funny. Yeah, you can do that. That's cute. Um, the uh, folks from... Uh, Electronic Cats. Electronic Cats, they have a live cat show. They're well, super cool. Yeah. I th- love them. They're our favorite open source hardware company at the moment. Yeah. Um, then this was kind of cool. There was this really weird project I thought was cool. It was Quick Python. It was interactive coding environment. And it like boots up. Is this the one? I saw that. This was a yeah. Raspberry Pi thing. This is, and I sent this to Anne. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've seen. Yeah, it was really neat. It's like, it's like you boot up your Pi directly into like the, a Python editing environment. And it, it's kind of like when you had a Commodore 64 and it just yeah. booted Oh, no, like, sorry. That's Snakeware. Snakeware. Sorry. That's the what's, other one. What's Quick Python? Quick Python was the interactive coding environment where you where you just use Python to code. Snakeware is the Linux Yeah, sorry. Distro. This is Snakeware. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. There is so much going on with Python right now. So the, the, that's really neat because it's like very Commodore 64-ish. Yeah. Anyways, um, also, we'll be having these on our site soon. This is also RISC-V. Very this interesting. Be- High five. It's yeah. like a micro bit ish device. Probably work with all of our accessories and stuff. Yeah, stuff. BBC Doctor Who, a High Five Inventor Coding Kit. We'll have those in our store. Um, I thought this was a neat article about the origin of the MIT license. We use it. So yeah. um, you can check it out at IEEE. 
And then we have uh, a smattering of other news that goes around all things Python, all things hardware. And a Kickstarter. There's a new code bug. That, yeah. Which is kind of interesting. It has these like pluggable pieces, a little bit like STEM QT, but like it's like mechanical. Yep. Check up our guide on which libraries. board to choose. We have over 281 libraries, and you can see what our team is up to. Current events, events that are coming up, some help wanted, and more. That is all the Python on hardware news. You can get that at adafruitdaily.com and sign up for the Python on hardware newsletter. And that's Python on Harvard this week. Yes.